to them. All right, y'all, welcome back to Command Arms Channel. Okay, today we're checking out some more Ukrainian combat footage. Now this, again, is from the 3rd Assault Brigade. This particularly is going to be the 1st Assault Battalion. Now, this is them pushing up on the city of Andrivka. I'm not sure if I'm saying that correctly. Um, but this is pretty intense. So they start off in like a strip of forest. It's all like burnt out. And then it looks like they're moving into more urban terrain. And this is actually a two-parter. So this is episode one. I will also react to episode two after this, but it looks pretty intense from what I've seen. Like the, the urban part of it, everything is just like rubble. And with urban combat, you generally have like a certain image, but with this one, everything is kind of in rubble. It really changes the dynamic up pretty significantly. So let's go ahead and check this one out. Damn, so this is pretty recent. Jeez. Look at the state of those trees, man. Давай, наваливай туда на край этого. Brass shock? Is that like a brass burn? Братан, я там простреливал и там отработал миномёт. Там там шла пидерская группа. Держали вот эту всю часть. Jeez, Сейчас там нет, this... это было, блядь, ещё минут 20 назад. Всё нормально. Тут кущах пидери нема? Нет, я простреливал весь этот сектор. Всё плюс, давайте, я вас открою. Подождите. Всё, снайпер, бежим по. Подожди, сейчас я дам ей. Dude, there is no cover though. На 12 все простреливалось. Eventually. <laughs> okay. Okay. Alright, so they're moving up. Looks like pretty uncontested so far because they've pretty much laid waste to everything. Jesus, look at this freaking scene right here, man. Like, this is really what you kind of picture with World War One, just, you know, super wide open terrain. Everything is just kind of decimated at this point. Even just like the fog and smoke kind of settling right above the ground. It's really unforgiving terrain to move in. So them, them. Okay. Bravo, Nora. Nora, Nora. Damn, yeah, so look, that's some of the rubble already. Now they got some dead space to hit. <laughs> Light the call signs. Nice, and he's controlling his rate of fire. That's pretty important, so you're not running out of ammo especially once you're pushing into like an urban assault because you run out of ammo a lot quicker Mina. that one sounded kind of odd Suka, guess. oh damn they have an ags okay so let's see he's got a pretty interesting setup is that like a pkm with a with an EOTech? Okay, I don't think I've ever seen that, to be honest. Jeez, look at that. Just layer of smoke, man. What kind of munitions are those? They sound... Люди. Экономим БК, блядь, ещё до хуя нам закрепиться, Sound потом ещё висеть там. Man, it must be so hard to battle track. Aside from just looking at the tape, the yellow tape. And hoping like you kind of understand where everybody is on your right and your left. Yeah, and I don't know how far he's moving, but even like small movements like that are just freaking brutal, especially if you've been pushing a firefight for a while, especially like with all the adrenaline when you start dumping some of that. At this point, they're still kind of engaged, so it's not necessarily an adrenaline dump yet. 
but just moving around that long with that much kid on and just the mental toll that these guys are facing, everything gets much more exhausting. Maybe not necessarily feeling it, but you can definitely hear yeah, it. Manda Glenn, Manda Glenn. Good communication. Interesting Manda builds Glenn. he's got there. No kidding. His gun is that fucked. Shit. Dude, this that's crazy. That's like really out of Call of Duty. You just grab some random weapon on the ground. At least he's got a suppressor. Not ideal though. That's wild. Man, the visibility is so poor. That's gotta be terrifying. You just feel like you might walk into some death lane or some dead space with a machine gun in it or something. What was this building? Jeez. Just reduced to nothing. Gosh. Yeah, and being engaged here, I mean, they have a little bit of dead space to like kind of like a defilade to hide in, but aside from that, there's really not a whole lot of cover. This is not ideal at all. And it's just kind of like terrain, like this twisted scrap metal. It's like, dude, if you're not wearing gloves, just something like this could easily take you out of the fight. Like if you jack up your hands that bad, where it gets like super cut up or, you know, whatever, it's going to be very hard just to kind of do anything at that point. And then, of course, you need to treat it a little bit later on when you're actually out of the firefight. But, yeah, a lot of guys I know don't like to rock gloves. And, you know, it is what it is. You kind of should get used to training with gloves and wearing gloves all the time. Because when you're moving into terrain like this, even, you know, bushes, thorns, or what have you, it's nice to have gloves as like an extra layer of protection. Because, like, your hands will get torn up so quick in this kind of terrain. Where's the building at? Jeez. I guess what was left of a building. Oh snap, they said drone. <laughs> oh, dude, that's a cheeky response. So, 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 this is actually like hell on earth, man. Jeez. Oh, tons of concrete. Some mountain of it, man. All right, so their headquarters is trying to do some battle tracking of everybody. Yeah, are these... Who are these guys with? It seems like it's just like a buddy pair right now. Oh, dude, they're in frag distance? I didn't know they were that close. Okay, so I guess it was... Another burrow. Huh? Gosh. Okay, so at least we got some idea of kind of what their orders are. I can't even tell what, what time of day this is. It looks a little bit later, but it's hard to tell. Oh man. Damn, that is getting very close. Holy shit. It's a dim. I mean, I guess there's worse cover out there, but dude, those are insanely close. 
So if they're using smokes, I'd imagine they're trying to push back. Um, generally, if you're using some sort of obscuration, you're either pushing an assault forward and you know, you're trying to use it so you get a little bit more time, whether you're dealing with an obstacle or something, or you're using it to kind of egress and kind of cover your, your tactical retreats. Um, but I'm not really sure. These kind of just seem like they're kind of just popping off. It's like almost as if they don't know which rounds they're loading. Yeah, for real, man, that is a sketchy terrain. So their orders are to push and hold this area. I mean, there's really not a whole lot here. It's like, I don't know, unless you're going to push a lot of people up like right after and try and fortify this, but holding this kind of terrain is going to be pretty difficult for any extended period of time. Oh, Shit, dude. <laughs> he's, like, he's like, I'm alive, you. <coughs> and right when you, right when it hits, I imagine like it takes a while to realize, am I actually good or or what? Because that was, I mean, it was close enough to just not only knock all the dust off of everything around them, but I mean, it seems like they probably had a pretty good concussive effect <laughs> as well. <laughs> Yeah, I'd say so. So I know this was kind of covering a whole company, but again, we're not seeing that many yet. Dude, and this is like, this is great terrain to like have a magnified optic with, but also something that's low power. So like an LPVO or maybe a magnified optic with a low power red dot <laughs> sight. <laughs> There's so many distances you can get engaged from this. It's just sketchy. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> oh, dude, that's a lot of blood. Он лягай рядом с ним. Лягай, лягай, продвигайся, мне ж некуда. Или мне трэль людей. Браво, пятьянисты! Снайпер, снайпер, западу на звезок, тримайтеся, я подхожу, я уже подтягиваюсь. Давай, давай! Again, I don't know like how much support these guys are going to be getting. They're told to kind of push up and hold this, but this again, there's really nothing here. And you don't want these guys to be just like kind of one occupying any space that they can just for cover because I mean, they're under indirect fire right now so they're going to want to stay in some type of cover but then again it makes it very hard to kind of align your guys or array your guys in a solid formation to be able to track them appropriately and also set up a good defense i mean you have to think the positions were set up by the russians to push the offensive in the other direction and now that they're occupying these positions they're going to be facing the opposite direction so the positions might not necessarily uh work for them you know actually facing that direction so they're going to have to kind of like make do or figure out where to array their guys. But again, I didn't know how long they're supposed to be staying here because it's not ideal to be under this type of indirect fire. Just shows these guys are freaking super tough. Okay. And I think episode two is when they really start pushing. <laughs> Shit. Okay. 
Okay, yeah, so we're definitely going to have to check out that second episode after this. But there's definitely a lot to consider here. I mean, again, when you're just kind of thinking about what gear do I need, you need to think of how often these guys are under indirect fire, the type of terrain that they're working in. You need some pretty solid footwear. Um, if it's not, you know, mid-length, probably like above your ankle type of boots, so you're not twisting your ankle because, yeah, then you're going to be a liability at that point and kind of seeing the, the rubble and stuff that these guys are having to move through, even just like the mud, all the roots that they're having to run over. You need some solid footwear so you're not jacking your feet up or twisting your ankle or breaking it, which would be, of course, even worse. And, of course, gloves when you're kind of working in all that rubble, all that kind of twisted scrap metal. It, yeah, gloves are going to be a nice thing to have. Eye protection, of course, with all the kind of shrapnel flying around that we've seen. And I bring this up a lot, but hearing protection that allows you, like electronic hearing protection that allows you to communicate effectively, but also, you know, protect your ears from the very obviously loud noises kind of happening around you. Pretty, pretty freaking important to have for your combat effectiveness and just general communication when you're kind of inside the firefights and you're having to kind of, you know, communicate with each other, move around and such. And knee pads, yeah, yeah built-in knee pads are clutch. Um, for the longest part of my career, either I didn't have knee pads or I had the knee pads that just kind of strapped to your legs, which sound like they'll work, but in reality, once you start running at all, even if they're super tight, once you start running, those things will be, you know, around your ankles within like 30 seconds. It's super inconvenient. So having those built-in knee pads that are protecting your knees, you can see here, a lot of times they don't have a whole lot of cover, so they're having to get down in this terrain, having to get as low as possible, and taking a knee is something that you're going to have to do a lot, and having knee pads is going to save your knees. Uh, yeah, because taking a knee on a rock is just so shitty. <laughs> it hurts. <laughs> like, And when you're being like engaged by indirect fire, and that's something that kind of affects you and then you start thinking about that not ideal so yeah a lot of things to consider that's kind of what i'm thinking about when i see this type of terrain but yeah there's really not a whole lot of preparation you can do to prepare yourself for this moving in an urban terrain moving in open terrain those in and of themselves are complicated in their own rights but then when you kind of combine it like this or just have a bunch of rubble it makes everything it makes everything kind of that much more complicated but yeah, let me know what you guys think. What are you guys picking up from this type of combat? Whether that be gear, whether that be tactics, kind of how they're communicating, let me know what you guys are thinking. Because again, you guys are going to have different perspectives than I am when it comes to picking out certain things. But yeah, thank you guys for watching. Thank you for supporting the channel. I love being able to do this, to be able to kind of, again, showcase this to all of y'all, kind of spread awareness of what these guys are having to deal with. And again, it's just different every single time we see it. And it's just, it's pretty mind blowing to see this much coverage. Again, kind of everybody's rocking a GoPro. So I appreciate you guys giving me that kind of platform and that outlet to be able to do this. And again, since I am still active duty in the US military, my hands are kind of tied as far as how much support I can do, but this is kind of just one outlet that allows me to, again, kind of share all of this with y'all and, yeah, show the good work that the 3rd Assault Brigade and all these Ukrainian fighters are doing. So, yeah, let me know what you guys think. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you have anything else to recommend, let me know. But, again, we'll be checking out episode two, so stay tuned for that. But that is it for this video. I'll see y'all in the next one.